Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in last week's video, we were working on the rows and my homework was to do a little bit more work with my threads here to build it up. But I decided just to hold my horses a bit. I feel like I need to get my ribbon in place, then come back through with the threads. So it sort of got put to one side and I didn't, um, didn't pick it up again. So I'm going to work on that now. And I've got the ribbon here and it really feels like it needs a little bit of an iron. So I'm going to turn my iron on and um, just give me a second. I probably should have done that before I started the video, but you never do. So let's just hold the horses on the threads because the ribbons are bulky, basically, and they may take up more space than I realise. The thread, the ribbon I'm going to be using is one of the Colour Streams range, and it's called Lipstick. It's so beautiful and bright that it's perfect for this. And because it's variegated, I'm going to be able to play a little bit of placement due, due to the um, the dyeing of the ribbon because there's sections there that are dark and then go quite bright. So this will give me the option to sort of potentially jump around a little bit. I don't know if I'll need this. Upon reflection, I think it's just too narrow. We've got this darker one up our sleeve if we feel like we need a little bit extra darkness. So let's just get ourselves a piece of the ribbon. I'm going to go for my really thick needle just so that it makes a nice generous hole. Put that through there to create our little attachment point. And then we're going to just do a quick little weave through here to create that nice loose not okay yeah the more I looked at the flower the more I thought no I need to actually get into position the ribbon side of things before I get too far ahead of myself now I don't have this in a hoop I hope that won't bite I think it'll be okay it's getting that ribbon to sit nicely for me. And not pull it too tight because we want the the petal to feel quite plump. I'm getting that needle back through without like I haven't even had a play with the seed stitch yet, which is the plan for the background is a neutral seed stitch so that I can really celebrate the whimsical watercolour. Um, paintwork that's happening here. The other thing I thought of too that I could work into this is some beads to create that texture. But I haven't had a chance to have a good look to see if I've got any really bright beads I know I have red and things like that but they're probably all very muted so ho-hum I have to buy some beads now I'm missing that there at the moment. I just think that could be stitched a different colour. And I'm trying to keep my ribbon stitches as loose as I can so that I get a nice bulbous puffy feel. I can't wait to do the irises. Oh yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now where will I go next? 
might come up here. Let me zoom in a little bit, guys. Look at that. How luscious is that? The girl is enjoying herself here. I just just felt like I should wait until I could get back on the camera and get the ribbon in position. I just felt like I was putting stitches probably where I didn't need to and I'd let the ribbon sing. What do they say? Start with your bigger things first and work down to your smaller detail. Definitely the case. Definitely the case with this ribbon. Mm. Just want to make that a little bit more voluptuous there. Just loosen that off a little. There we go. That's better. Let's have another stitch in here. getting lighter now so I've got enough to do one more I might just bring him through oh that's so soft and pink coming through next I wonder if I could get one more stitch that's so bright and beautiful. Yeah. And then I'll come back through. I'm not going to be able to knot that. So what I might do is some little stitches with a thread. Just to secure it. That's great. I love it. Really happy with this. This is great because summer is going to be completely different again from the last one. You've really, really got to let your fabric tell you what it wants to be. Because each piece is so different. When you're painting in you know, what the artist has done before you. So the last thing you want to do, I think, is overpower what's there because you've picked the piece for a reason. Unless, of course, it's a piece that you, you're just not digging, but there might be something about the flowers on it that is a good start. Probably my autumn piece I think is going to be like that the flowers are amazing the background yeah probably will be lost now I might work might work this here and see if we can lay down some nice voluptuous paler ribbons yep I'm just going to put my finger on them as they lay down just to hold them where I want them to be. So when it sneaks through the fabric, that will then come into position. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, my rose. Huh. I haven't, I haven't stitched a rose for a little while so I'm really pleased with it whether I've got lilacs or hold your finger there girl concentrate didn't concentrate need to just ease that out a little we want it to be voluptuous gentle fingers I'm 
going to hair stuck there I don't want that now we're changing tone again so let's get that stitch in and we'll hold it beautiful now I need to shift the angle and sort of head towards the tail of our, our little bluebird there and then we're getting a bit of darker tone so that's great that will bury in under there. Hold it. When I get back to that lighter tone, I can sneak maybe another petal in over that so it'll look really textured, I think. Let's hold it. Oh, maybe I won't need to. That looks great. One little stitch is all I've got left, I think. And I wouldn't have gone very far with it. Yeah, beautiful. Oh. I won't, won't do that. Let's, let's just do what we did before. Stitch it down with some cotton. It's a great way of securing your ribbons, especially if you just use every millimetre of it like you do. Now the question is, do we work a bit of that dark, finer ribbon in now just to get a bit of depth in behind things? Let's have a little look at that next. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Well, looks like there's going to be a bit of ribbon embroidery with this piece. Uh, won't it be good next year to pull them out and start using them as a seasonal calendar and revisit all these beautiful, beautiful little elements that we've stitched. I'm going to have a little looky at this because I think it might just work a treat. Let's have a let's have a try. It's such a dark colour. It's beautiful. It is a cheap one, so it could technically break down the more it drags through, but that's okay. Look, I've only paid a couple dollars for it. So I might do a little bit down here and then I'll head up to there, I think. Maybe even come into that embroidery a little bit. to get a bit of darkness down. Yep. So used to be so used to doing fancy stitches with this stuff, I sort of feel like I should be doing bullion knots and all sorts of Jennifer Clouston inspired activities. But no, just keep it simple. Just use it as texture color just painting mm, beautiful i might just sneak up here and see if we can get yeah that's good Gives me a nice point to the petal. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> Listen to my reactions. I swear I was at the candy bar or the dessert bar. It's all about the ribbon. You can hear my phone beeping. I hope it's not anything important because I'm in the moment. I really don't want to leave. Oh yeah. I think I might leave it at that for the ribbon. Like it's, you gotta know when to stop, don't you? I think this little bit that's left, 
we might go have a look at the other rows and so that it's used if we just put a few little where is it it's a different color isn't it um, I'm just I'll just put a couple little whoops not that I'm going to get many stitches out of this to be honest but you know the girl can't throw away a, a skerrick of I might just do just a couple little stitches here at least it's using it otherwise it just gets lost in the you know, the abyss of the room I'll just sneak a few little I'll just follow that edge until we run out can't hurt I want to master this guy before I really get on to this particular flower but let's just use up our ribbon jump over to here gosh it goes further than you think the ribbon like I thought that was a tiny little piece but I'm actually going to get quite a few stitches they are little mind you there we go maybe one more One more. Okay, I like that. One more. Because, <laughs> uh, like I said, I can always stitch down this. Can I get one more? There's like a point there. Be nice if I could utilize that tiny little bit oh gosh it's a small little morsel look at this got it okay we're stitching it down forever into position what's going on here have i knotted it no all right now we're cooking Let's get that secured. I will come back right at the very end too. And if I'm in that area, I'll catch down any knots of this ribbon because you just don't want it coming undone. I'm all thumbs today. I don't know why. So let's, let's eliminate you. And while I'm here, I'm going to scoot back and I'm going to secure this little knot. He's a loose knot and it would be a crying shame to have that come out on me. Just a little stitch will hold him. Maybe a second little stitch can't hurt, hey? The tricks you learn by watching YouTubers and how they work their ribbons. Gosh, 12 months ago, I was fearful of ribbons, silk ribbons. I think half the problem is they're just so expensive. I might pop a knot there. They're just so expensive. So you collect a few, you come across a few in your travels, but you just don't want to waste them. So you sort of put it in the too hard basket. And it was thanks to Susanna's project where we visited um, vintage sewing techniques and ribbon embroidery was one of them. And I remember seeing it on the list. I thought, oh gosh, here we go. But I gave it a go. In amongst all of that adventure, um, the Roxy girls showed us Jennifer Clouston's 
uh, books. So I had one of those under my wing as well as a bit of something to lean on and it really, really made a difference. So now that the ribbon's in place, I feel more confident. Remember we had to cut this a bit shorter. It was a bit fiddly. Yeah, now that the ribbon is down, I feel like I can go back in and play a little more confidently. Like, for example, coming through here with a bit of this. Just laying down some additional stitches. In the center of the rows, I think I'll keep it even lighter again, so it becomes quite a feature. Technically, it probably should be darker. But I think I will go lighter like they have. The sun is bouncing around in there. I'm going to need to find a more plummy ribbon, a oh, thread, either side of this pink. It's a purpley plum colour. I might do that next because then I'll have that whole petal finished and it, I think it'll set us up with the colours I need for the rest of those remaining petals. Oops. Down you go. I can hear my phone ringing now. That's my husband. So I better pause it, guys, and go and answer that phone, and I will be back. Hi, guys. I'm back. So while I was chatting to hubby, I did a little bit more stitching. I found another thread colour to add to the mix. It was in the bucket. It's like that port whiny colour. So it's gone in here and a little bit through the ribbons. But then I picked up this guy that was a Sue Spargo that I haven't used either. And I'm just using the last of that thread and I worked around the end of these petals, sort of into the light a little bit. I've got a little bit left on my needle. So I'm just, just scooting around through here. I was just thinking of Maybe doing a little bit of the orange next. Getting that done. There's a little bit over there as well. Of the end of that. Sorry, I'm saying words and you're probably thinking, what's she talking about? The end of this ribbon is a little point and it's technically orange, but I'm going to just pop a few of these pink stitches over here. I don't think it needs to be orange there. And then I'll just use that up. Okay. So now let's pick up this yellow again. I think I'm going to work that because if I don't like it, I can then come back through with pink and tone it down a little bit. It really is just experimenting. And there's no rules. Like if you can follow the shading of the flower, that's probably the number one rule. Other than that, just enjoy it. So I'm going to come down to this little petal here. I feel like there's a, a hint of light glistening on the end there. So let's pop a few little yellow stitches in there. I'm just going to take my glasses off so I can really focus. Yeah, just a little peekaboo there 
then there's a little bit over here the bouncing of light on that petal like I know it sounds technical and I'm probably overthinking it a little bit but let's just pop a couple little stitches in there now I might go to the center I think let's knot that off and go I wonder what some little colonial knots or French knots would look like in there. Or is it going to be too, might be too bulky if I do that. Let's just stay on the, just little stitches. Might get away with some knots in the center of the flower, but undecided. Let's just this yellow peeking around it really gives it a fresh spring-like look and I'm going to fan these stitches around so we get that curved feel in there yep now let's peek into here it's a bit of a washed out yellow in there and I'm probably a little bit bright but gee, I've got Sue Spargo thread there with sparkles in it. So, you know, it is what it is. Oh gosh, I like that. That's really, really coming alive. Now I might end that off because I'm going to head there, there and there next. That's not bad for an old piece of golden thread that's come from goodness knows where it's good when you can recycle threads isn't it if you're lucky enough to be able to find them they can be a bit rare oh there goes the scissors onto the carpet so when I'm looking for the scissors next just say they're on the carpet Corinne okay now double thread again let's pop a few stitches there just to put a peek of that gosh you wait till we do that yellow flower there oh my goodness it's going to be very flash indeed what's going on now i've got threads got loopy bits at the back where's my scissors on the floor pick them up got a little thread here that's come from behind let's just give it a snip okay where we go again yep so once I get all these pinks and yellows and that laid down, I'll then seed stitch right around just to make sure that that's the way I want to go with the seed stitch. I think it will be. And if I can match to that linen, it'll keep it clean and fresh, but still be textured. It's not really exciting for patches of fabric, but I think it'll suit it. I'm 99% sure. I'm see, I'm even tempted to stitch these little drizzles of paint that are on it. Because I, I sort of like them. It's just like adds interest. Like a little satin stitch or don't know. So now I'm just going to drop down into there, pop a couple little stitches. Probably getting a hand, getting ahead of myself with the yellow here. Once you start, you can't stop, can you? All right, so down into here, a couple little stitches, just a few. Gosh, I 
gosh, Christmas is not far away, is it, guys? Oh, well, so far, my Christmas is looking fairly quiet. New Year's is going to be a bit different, but Christmas at the moment will just be immediate family, which will be good. We can then, you know, really spoil ourselves with some good food, get everyone's favourites. Be nice and just sit around and relax. It'll be really good, I think. Okay, I think that's enough yellow, girl. It's probably too much yellow, but anyway, we'll see. Like I said, if it if I find that I need to stitch over it, I can. If we've got to push it back a little bit, but I don't think so. I'm loving it. Do we need anything darker first? No, I don't think so. I think if I brought that guy in, it would look a little, a little odd. If anything, it's probably the port wine color, but I'll just stitch through here with this thread. Just trying to speed it up a little bit. I was doing stab stitch, but I'm just gonna speed that up. Pepper and Bandit are trotting past the window. Looking rather guilty. And I might just bury a few little pink stitches into that yellow just to soften that a little bit. And I've got some, I can try and keep that curved feel to my stitches because we're going round and round in the center of this rose. So I'll just try and do this. I'm trying to speed up a little bit and get at least the flower finished. How are we going for time? I think we have about 40 minutes Oh, plenty. Plenty. I think I did 20 odd minutes before the phone rang and I paused it. Now what has happened here? We've got a thread. See what happens when you rush? Do I deal with you or deal with you later? I'll deal with you later. I think I've gone through the ribbon and it's given a, a bit of a mess. I'm not even on camera, am I? Let's get back. Now I'll leave that zone there for that plummy port wine colour. And I'll just scoot around this edge here. I wonder if a courier has dropped off a parcel. That's why Pepper was having a bit of a, a wolf. When it's only a brief wolf, it's like someone's been and gone. You know that? Yeah, that's good. Now, I think I just need a couple more here of that colour. Then I'm going to change. Going to change colours. Because I feel like we could be a little brave in there. Now that I've got this pink flower nutted out, 
Mind you, he's different down there. He's got a different tone about him too. It's very clever, this, this artwork. I'm only two videos in, so no need to panic that I won't get it finished. Relax, girl, and enjoy it. Now I've scooted out here to this little, little morsel. That looks like it would work with those colours. And then this up here, this big petal across the top. That's definitely these colours. I keep going until I finish this needle off. Hubby was going to ring me back and I just texted him and said, call me in 40 minutes. I just want to get this video going he'd be like yeah yeah righto whatever <laughs> he knows that when I'm in the zone that's getting a bit too short so let's knock that off guys okay now I might might load up with this port wine colour. It's a bit of a random colour. I remember picking it up thinking, well, I know I don't have those sorts of tones. I'll grab one and pop it in my stash. Come on, thread the needle. Come on, come on. There you go. Okay. So, back to the centre of the flower, and we're now giving it a little bit of interest in there. So, I can see an opportunity there for a few stitches. Like, this is really detail now. And at the glance of the eye, no one will ever realise that I've changed to another colour in there, but it will help that centre look like it's got a bit of movement. There's dips and bumps and it's like when the painters go back and smear a little bit extra paint. You think the painting's done and then they go back in and they add that bit extra shading and it's like, oh my gosh, look at that piece now. It's really come alive. Don't get into the habit of you've got the needle threaded. You just, oh, I'll just finish it in that because often it's that little bit extra colour. See, that petal where my fingernail is there isn't stitched yet, and it's a different colour again. So I'm not going to do it in this port wine. I'll put a little bit there, but I'll come back through, I think, with that burgundy tone. Yeah. Where else should I put some port wine? I just put a little stitch or two in there, just to blend that a little bit. Okay, lovely. Now. That darker stitch, let's get a little bit of this. Just pop a little bit over there. It's a shadow from the bird now. So it won't hurt to be a little bit darker over here underneath his wing. Sort of makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys. Good when it's abstract flowers you can sort of push the boundaries a little bit and you'll get away with it when you're doing realistic stuff or that fine embroidery 
yeah, you've got to really think about every stitch and placement of colour. That's all just too hard. Yep. Okay. So that's the centre done, I believe. I didn't end up doing any French knots like I thought. I don't think I need it. Can always come back through. If I find some beads that suit, I might even drop a few little sparkles in there just to a bit of fun. Now I do need to do this here. I'm wondering if I use that. Yeah, I'm gonna going to use this. Gotta stop saying gonna. I don't think I ever will. I think it's just part of my speech. But now that I'm filming on YouTube, I hear I sort of listen to what I say probably more so than normal. You just speak, you, you speak your, your speech in everyday life and you, you don't really think too much about it, but I really notice it now. My poor English, does it matter? Gosh, the English dialect has changed so much through the centuries. The way they used to speak versus the way we speak now. Gosh, if I'm going to beat myself up about that, well, it's probably actually not my fault. It'd be my forefathers, wouldn't it? Where we learn these things as children. I always had an English teacher in grade one, two, and three. I'm sure she was a lovely lady, but my memories of her were a little bit hard. And she used to always say that my English was just a mess, my speech. And the school put it down to German grandparents with their tone. And then um, the Australian accent coming through the generation of, you know, my parents, plus my surrounding child mates. You know, the influence of learning to speak from your siblings and your, your friends. So, and then and there's different tones to speech as you travel around Australia. If you're, you know, out into the rural, rural areas versus the city areas. And there's definitely a, a, a tone there. So mishmash it all together and you're going to get... <laughs> A bit of everything. What does it matter? Makes me unique, doesn't it? Just like this flower, it's unique. <laughs> it's gonna be just fine. So I'm just getting the last of those stitches in. Yes, I'm pleased I did that plummy port wine colour. That colour up there on that last petal, that needs to be light. It's up in the air. That there. I think that'll be the last little bit. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's, it's going to be this colour. The plain Sue Spargo pink, not the sparkle. I've already got the sparkle there, so we'll blend this one into it. So it won't look totally sparkly. And then we've got the um, yellow there waiting as well to catch the edge of that petal. The good thing about, I guess, to toning your colors to your fabric is when you have little edges where you may not have placed a stitch, if it all blends really well with what you've stitched, you'll never notice it because it just is shadowing to your, your embroidery. I really like that. 
Sometimes you don't have to be as intense with your stitches. Or as precise, you can let the fabric enhance from behind. But things like that purple edge there on that iris, that'll have to be pretty precise because that really sets the scene for that whole petal. Without that being spot on, it'll just be a wash of colour and you won't tell that that's you know, a petal for a flower. Yeah, that's good. I might just drift then. Do I take a few up? No, I'm not going to dilute that gold edge, I don't think. Just looking over my flower. Is there anything else? No. Oh, how yummy is that? I love pinks and a yellow. Let's have a look at that. Mm. Yeah. If anything, I could do a little bit more of that, I think, through here. But the problem is it's not going to look... Let's give it a go. I don't know if it'll look... Bulbous. How are we going for time? Plenty of time. What's the word? I don't know what the word is. I just think I need a bit of that up there. Not so much that. So we're going to make the needle end at the dark end here because I want to bounce the brighter pink. It'll only be small stitches, I think. Just feel like, it, I don't know, this might be a bad idea. Just feel like the petal's a bit heavy down there. So I might just balance it up here. I know I'm now going out into the area of which the artist has not been with paint. I just feel like I need a little little thickness up the top there, just a little bit of ribbon. Through there sort of caught my eye too, but I'm just, I think up here will do the trick. Couple more just to get that round shape. Yeah, that's it. That's what we want. Yep. Going to do oh gosh, I hope I don't spoil it. I just going to place a couple petals up here yeah and back up here oh that's a bit thin one more it's starting to twist. I want that soft. That's better. That's better. Just felt like it needed that little bit extra at the top there. Yep, good. Ah, <sighs> that was nerve wracking. have a little look I guess the only other thing now yeah that's good 
nice and abstract. All right, I'm going to put my pinks away and my yellows. And I just want to make a decision on what we do the seed stitch in. This, I think, is too bright. No. We need the classic cream thread. Just hold for a second, guys. Oops, kick the camera. Oh. Just want to grab my container of neutral threads. We need to make sure we've got the right cream for the background. That's really cream. That's like a buttery. What's this one? Is that the same as that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a 12. It's finer. Hmm. It's too buttery. I think I need the 12, to be honest. The eight's a bit thicker. Let's just do a little test. We've got time. This will set us up for the rest of the project. So I'm going at the moment, a crew in cream. A crew is cream, sorry. Number 12. I think my little seed stitches need to be petite, petite. Anything big and chunky, I think, is going to look a bit odd, to be honest. But I might be wrong. And I'm going to start sneaking around this flower. I need it to blend and not be obvious that it's there, is the look I'm going for. And I need them to be small. You'll be thinking I'm creating so much work for myself. But I really like seed stitch to be tiny. You don't want it to be blaringly obvious it's there. But when you look, you think, oh my goodness, look at all that seed stitch. That's the look you want. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so number 12 is the thread we need. That's good because then I can scoot up through this flower and it's not going to overpower, be overpowering the coloured stitches. Gosh, that's a lot of stitches, guys. This is this thousands gosh talk about create work for myself oh my goodness it's all good a little bit at a time if you do 50 centimeters not 50 centimeters 50 cent piece in australia that it's our biggest coin if you just do that much seed stitch at a time you're surprising how quickly it comes together so I'm out of the range of the flower now so we'll just do this little bit up here does it complement yes can it be seen yes Someone's going to look at this piece in 200 years from now if it's not in landfill and go, oh my goodness, look at that girl. Look what she did. She must have had a lot of time on her hands. <laughs> goodness me. But I do like seed stitch. I find seed stitch calms me down, allows me to think about maybe this flower while I just have a session of seed stitch, like... We put a couple hours a week into seed stitch. I think it's good for the mental health. Before you know it, you've got it all stitched. Yeah, that's good. 
don't want to go too far a foot because I want to get it dense so we know what's coming and if it will work. See, I feel like that's a bit gappy there. Like if you find seed stitches a bit too much for you, you can just do little bits of it around the place too. Just little highlight clusters of it. Ow. Just... Oh. Oh. Really can be quite, quite pretty. Just little, little bits of it, but... You know, the girl doesn't like that. She, she's got to fill it full. Makes the fabric look like it's flopped. How are we going for time, guys? Taking my glasses off. Need them on to see the screen. All right, we've got time. We've got time. Another few minutes. Unless the doorbell rings, I can hear a delivery truck out the front, but it may not be for me. Yep. Itty bitty stitches. haven't done this seed stitching mass like this for a little while. It was right through some of the Roxy down the garden path pieces and previous work that I've done. So it'd be good to have that as my background this time. Okay. Happy days. couple more and then we'll be out of thread and I will leave you alone you can go off and do what you need to do okay that's it one more stitch one more stitch it's a big needle it's the wrong size needle done okay guys thanks so much for joining me we have one pink rose sorted gorgeous random stitches I love it the, the flowers are just going to come alive we started the seed stitch I'll bring it up to the camera you can see all those little sit stitches and I can drift it right through that flower I'll probably re-thread and start through there and pop up over here and work my way up through this zone here but I'll have a play a meander with that and um, yeah look forward to seeing you in the next video where we celebrate summer all right guys look after yourselves bye